Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Comic Book Showcase, Cancelled Comic Cavalcade. My name is Jamie Harry. I'm the founder of the Marvel and DC Databases. We've got a great show for you today, albeit a little bit of a sad and depressing one. Uh, I'll explain what that means in just a second. Joining me today, I've got uh, Mike, I've got Rab, and for the first time, I've got Kyle joining us. Uh, he's the DC data, uh, administrator on the DC Database. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Fantastic. Um, so, so uh, all things, all good things must come to an end, and uh, so it is with comics. Uh, we're actually today talking about cancelled comics, a uh, series that have come to an either an untimely end or maybe a justifiable end, but ones that nonetheless uh, are no more. Um, so no series is really too famous or too long running to escape the the sort of acts of editorial staff, as we've seen with uh, Amazing Spider-Man, for instance, recently last year. Um, over 700 issues, March 1963 to uh, I think it was early January, February, something like that, 2013. Uh, absolutely long running, famous uh, series that introduced. Uh, you know, some really hard-hitting characters, uh, Vulture, Doc Ock, Sandman, J. Jonah Jameson, and obviously flushed out what would be the mythos of the Spider-Man uh, friends and family in the Spider-Man universe. Um, so the cancellation of that series led into, uh, you know, what we now know as uh, Superior Spider-Man, and, uh, you know, with the death of, of uh, Peter Parker, or at least the apparent death of, as it is with comics, uh, Spider-Man, and uh, new series, breathing new life into new series. So I guess what we're going to do today is a little different from our usual format. We're actually going to, uh, each of us, talk about a series that was uh, loved by each of us individually, and, and uh, why it was important, and what happened, why it was cancelled. So uh, I'll toss it right over to... Uh, we'll We'll start with Rab. Rab, I think you were talking about the movement. Why don't you tell us all about that one? Well, I don't want to say that I loved it. <laughs> um, it was a book by Gail Simone, and it started uh, July of last year, and it's going to finish. Well, I guess it has finished. It has finished. Its last issue came out this month. Um, it was a team book that starred five or six, I forget how many, uh, basically minorities. And uh, they were a team of uh, kids who were looking after this town called Coral City where all of the police were corrupt and everybody was entrenched in crime and they had maybe a uh, not orthodox way of dealing with people who... Uh, bothered the citizens of their town. Okay, so what was good about this series was that it had some very strong character work and very strong dialogue, which I think is a strength of Gail Simone as a writer in general. Like, yes, Gail Simone writes very strong characters and strong dialogue, and I think her strength very much is in team books as opposed to in solo books. Like, say, Batgirl is lacking in uh, character, strong character development and snappy dialogue like you might have come to expect from Birds of Prey when she used to write that. So the movement was a nice opportunity for her to have more of that snappy back-and-forth stuff. And uh, so you got these nice little moments where nobody was fighting and they revealed character. And the diverse cast was pretty interesting. But then there's all of this stuff which I believe probably led to the book being canceled, like the fact that, in my opinion, there was no, like, driving mystery. Like, you, when you're reading a book, you want that book to have some kind of momentum, but I felt like this book did not have that. And um, the characters, like even though they were a diverse bunch of characters and they were sort of likable at first, they didn't get their origins or their backstories explained in timely fashion. If that's, And I think that made them a little unsympathetic. And uh, to the point where the most sympathetic characters for me were this police captain who is heading up a, a corrupt police force and the guy who had sex with his wife. <laughs> because these two characters are trying to, like, maintain order with this corrupt police force going on and these kids who are being vigilantes. And 
that's that to me is identifiable more than a bunch of kids who are just angry with the cops and not white dudes. <laughs> so so was that why the series was canceled? Is because the story was kind of not going anywhere? Well, I think I think overall the, the series was canceled because it had low sales, and low sales is typically I think that's just what determines a cancellation in general, but. I think the reason why sales were low was because the, the, the book was lacking in momentum that might have appealed to a wider audience. I mean, it has a huge fan base of people who like the book, and I think a lot of those people identify with the minority characters, uh, and that's not, a, that's not a bad thing, but I think you need more than just that to hold the book up. He wasn't enough to prop the book up. So that's, that's actually a good point. Talking about big... Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, so talking about sort of uh, big fan base or characters that are sort of more popular and sort of tend to float on the popularity of the character, Cable and Deadpool, and I think, Mike, that's what you were uh, going to lead us down the path, uh, the eventual cancellation of, uh, of that series. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, Cable and Deadpool was uh, a series that started in 2004, um, it came out of uh, both of the Deadpool and Cable series being cancelled, um, and it brought together an unlikely pairing of Cable and Deadpool, such as the title. And uh, it was, like, a, I think a very interesting series because the odd couple dynamic of the two characters was an interesting combination. I mean, on one hand, you have this uh, very uh, militarized um, uh, fly-by-the-books Cable who, you know, it's, like, there's a certain way of doing things, and then you pair him up with Deadpool, who flies by the seat of his pants, is a complete sociopath, and, like, is never serious at all. And then also add in the fact that he breaks the fourth wall continually, um, and I thought it was, like, a really good combination of characters. And uh, the storyline lasted for, I believe it was 50 issues, um, and that spanned through a whole bunch of different story arcs, including uh, House of M, and uh, even through the uh, Civil War there. And it was, um, I think, poor writing in the end that kind of led to the downfall of that series. But, I mean, afterwards it's now got this huge cult following that um, people seem to really enjoy that pairing. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was really, really good. I particularly like some of the uh, storyline where um, it was during the House of M series where uh, Deadpool actually picks up uh, from Mr. Sinister uh, a baby uh, cable and is taking care of this, like, baby cable. And, like, Deadpool taking care of a baby? Like, come on, that's the most ridiculous, like, concept uh, ever, I think, ever in the history of comic books. That, like, right there is ridiculous. And uh, I really enjoyed... Um, that aspect of the series, and uh, yeah, it was unfortunate to see it get cancelled. It was, uh, actually, there was a second volume, if I'm not mistaken, that came out after, sort of, uh, Marvel Now's new initiative uh, last, or, sorry, two, I guess, going back two years now, uh, Cable and Deadpool came back again. When you said that the uh, readers, like, now are looking back on the series nostalgically, do you think maybe that's just because the book went on for long enough that there are story arcs to be like, yeah, that one story arc earlier on was really good, and then it got really crappy, and I don't pay attention to those. <laughs> like, Because like, the movement's only 12 issues, so you don't get the same ability to be like, yeah, I look fondly on those earlier issues, but then... <laughs> yeah, I can't really say that the... like. Um... I'd say maybe in the beginning the the campiness of some of the uh, the like the series was something that people probably can look back and say, oh, that was really good. I like that aspect of it because it like they really were kind of silly about the whole thing, but um, like th really the the entire series, if you go back and look at it, it's quite ridiculous. Um, I think that's what I liked the most about it was the fact that it was ridiculous and. Uh, that's the one thing I enjoy most about Deadpool, is he is, in fact, ridiculous. Um, I, I really can't say why people would actually go back and um, see this as, like, a cult-following type uh, book, other than the fact that it's, um, 
was one canceled because that's primarily a reason people go back and say, "Oh, this series was wonderful." And uh, two was, I think that for cable at least, that was the last series um, where he was actually written well and they actually had stuff that they could still do with the character. Because after that, you saw the slow demise of cable. Um, going through the series where they really didn't know how to write for him. I mean, this is a character who is like really like brought back from the past, uh, brought back to the past for a specific reason. Once that reason's done, how do you treat that character? The same went for Bishop. Like the storyline pretty much dies at that point, and the only way that they could really like do something with him was a good pairing with Deadpool. So. That's interesting. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Mike. Actually, uh, I actually enjoyed the first volume of Cable vs. Deadpool and the second volume, which came out after Marvel Now as well. Um, both characters generally I, I do enjoy. Um, something I actually haven't read, which um, I'm actually interested to hear more about, uh, Kyle uh, was, is going to talk about Blackhawks. Uh, Kyle, tell me all about that, because I actually just don't know. Yeah, Blackhawks was a, a book. It was a, one of the series launched with the New 52. So it started in November 2011. Uh, it only ran eight issues, unfortunately, so it had a very short run. But uh, I think it was DC's attempt to have a G.I. Joe book. So they kind of had each uh, each member of the team kind of had their uh, their specialties. There were guys that were, you know, just brawlers. There were uh, tech people. Um, just kind of each person had their little uh, special skills or, or uh, abilities that helped the team out. Uh, the idea of the team was that they were basically funded by the UN. Uh, they were a secret organization, and their uh, their mission, I guess, was to kind of be on the cutting edge of technology and kind of uh, decide which technology uh, was was uh, harmful to humanity, I guess, and kind of um, take on those threats that other you know superhero teams with, with superpowers weren't really uh, able to to go out and and face with you know with super speed and things like that. They were more of a, of a tech and you know, a precision-based organization that kind of took these things on. Uh, unfortunately, I think DC kind of missed on this book just because I think, one, it was kind of a, a, a G.I. Joe's, a little bit of an imitation, and uh, Mike Costa, the writer for that book, was also a G.I. Joe writer. So I guess if you're going to have a G.I. Joe writer and a G.I. Joe book, and you still can't succeed, maybe that's not the book for DC. I'm not really sure there. Uh, anyway, it, it lasted eight issues, like I said, and I think the they just didn't have the sales. I think it was a whole new team. There were no there were no existing characters from uh, any other DC books. They really didn't interact much with the, the rest of the DC universe. So they were just kind of, uh, I don't know, just kind of in their own little corner with no interaction with anybody else. And I think fans... They were not familiar with the the old quality, you know, Blackhawks book. weren't uh, interested and, and didn't find out about the book until it was too late. So actually, well, that is a good. That leads me to a good question. Why did you pick up the Blackhawks book? Like, what what sort of sparked your interest? Was it the art? Was it uh, because of my Costa? Or what sort of drew you to the book in the first place? I think for me, I'm one of those those few people out there that knew about the Blackhawks. You know, the quality. Uh, you know, World War II era team of, of fighter pilots, and I thought, it, you know, it'd be cool to check out kind of a more obscure uh, team book, you know, something that hadn't been published in a while, and and it wasn't exactly, you know, what I thought it would be, but I definitely just fell in love with, like, the concept and the characters and just the whole thing before, you know, eight issues came and went and it was over. Fair enough. I mean, uh, obviously, a lot of things. Uh, and I'll I'll just step back from uh, comic book for a second. And just you know, toss out the obligatory reference to Firefly being uh, you know canceled before its time. But um, uh, you know, I, I guys, that that was actually really great. I appreciated the the bit of an education on on some of those topics there. Um, but we are actually out of time for this episode, so uh, we do have more to discuss. We will talk about it in sort of uh, the extra scenes, as it were. Uh, so check that out. Uh, we'll put the link in uh, below. Um, and as, as always, uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Like, tell tell us uh, what your favorite series was, or or uh, you know what you thought of uh, uh, the movement, Cable and Deadpool, Blackhawks, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, tell us in the comments below. 
But our question for you this week is, uh, what canceled series ended before its time? What did you think uh, was a series of books that just had more life in it, had more uh, stories to tell that uh, you know the editorial staff, either for sales or political reasons, was ended before you would have liked to have seen it? So let us know in the comments below, and uh, we appreciate you joining us for yet another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.